and welcome to this lecture. This is the structure and function of the kidneys. Let's look first of all at the aim. Now, what we're trying to do is describe with their diagrams, photographs, the histology and growth structure of the kidneys. Let's think first of all about what the kidneys actually do. So, the role of kidneys is to move waste products from the blood and to produce this substance called urine that we excrete. We can also say urine passes out the kidney along the ureter to the bladder where it's stored before release. Let's have a quick diagram now to show where they're located. Now here we've got the kidneys. There are two kidneys here. Now most people have two kidneys. They're positioned on either side of the spine just below the lowest rib. Now each kidney is supplied with blood from the renal artery and is drained by the renal vein. Just wondering at this point how much of this you can actually label. So what I should do is just pause the video at this point and try and label first of all the general position and structures involved in the excretory system and then on this side over here we've got a section through a kidney. This is a longitudinal section here through the kidney. So what I want to do is pause the video at this point and have a go at labeling as much as you can. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, pause. Okay, now assuming you did pause like you should have done, let's look now and see what you could label. Over here we've got the, the two kidneys, there's one here and there's one here. The tubes lead out the kidney called the ureters. The ureters and they go down to the bladder here where urine is stored before being released through the urethra. Now these two urethra, ureter, very similar looking words aren't they? Make sure that you can, okay, ureter, urethra, make sure you can distinguish between the two. Ureter goes from kidney to bladder and urethra leads from the bladder. Okay, let's whiz over here to the um, actual longitudinal section. We've got here the this thing here, the whole thing, this is highly magnified of course, highly magnified. This here is the position of a nephron tubule. Notice here that part of the nephron tubule sits within the cortex and part of it sits within the medulla. We'll come back to that in a moment. The outer thin membrane of the kidney is called the capsule. This what do you call it, purpley, I suppose it's a browny colour here, it's called the cortex, and within that you've got the medulla. Here's your branch here of the hepatic, sorry, of the renal, did I say hepatic? So sorry, the renal vein taking blood out of the kidney, and here you've got the branch of the renal artery bringing blood into the kidney. And here, eventually, all of the urine will drain into the pelvis, that's it, these sections here, and the pyramids here are to pelvis, and drain then out through the ureter, where it's then taken down to the bladder. Now we're particularly interested now in this section here. As I said, this is the position of a kidney tubule or nephron. So let's look at this in a bit more detail, shall we? Now the nephron or kidney tubule, I mean same thing, depends which book you're reading really. So it could be a nephron, it could be a kidney tubule. Now they are very, very tiny and there's about a million in each kidney, okay, about one million in each kidney, and what they have got is a really rich blood supply. There's many tiny blood capillaries around the kidney tubules or nephrons. Now, blood drains from the capillaries into nephron where urine is formed, okay. Again, let's just pause this, let's pause, and um, what I've done, I've blanked out all the labels. So, have a pause here and see how many bits you can label, okay. Three, two, one, pause. Okay, now how did you get on? Let's see what we've got. Now, let's start at the top here. Here we've got what's called the afferent arterial. Arterial is a very, very, very small artery. Afferent means going towards. So this one here is taking blood towards, okay, towards um, the tubule itself, little arrowhead there. Here you've got the um, glomerular capillary, and here we've got the efferent. Efferent means taking it away. Now notice the difference in diameter. This diameter here, Okay, is bigger than this diameter here. Now that's really important because if you've got a smaller diameter here than you've got there, it means the pressure here builds up and that pressure is really important as we'll see later. So this is the, the glomerular capillary forming what's called the glomerulus. Around it you've got the renal or Bowman's capsule. So this bit here is a Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule then drains into this thing here called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal because it's nearest to Bowman's capsule. Convoluted means twisted. So you see it's twisted. Now notice how around you've got loads and loads and loads of blood capillaries. So here's your renal artery taking blood in. The blood gets squeezed. Ultrafiltration I'll mention in a moment. And 
everything that's well, virtually everything that's passed through here into the PCT or proximal convoluted tubule, but loads gets reabsorbed into capillaries, which then branch together and go out through the renal vein. Now, coming out of the PCT or proximal convoluted tubule, you've got this structure here called the loop of Henley. I don't know who Henley was, but he's got a loop named after him. This bit here is the descending limb, and this bit is the ascending limb. And again, you've got more reabsorption taking place here. This then leads into the distal or distant convoluted, i.e. twisted tubule, the DCT. And the DCT then leads eventually into the collecting duct over here. Now remember, um, collecting duct is like um, sewer, and all the... All the um, nephrons will be draining into here, so it's all draining into here like a main sewer and it carries away eventually down into the ureter. Notice here I'm saying this bit here is in the cortex, this bit is in the medulla. Let's whiz back a second, see if I can, can I do it? Yeah, there we go. I said earlier that one part of the um, nephron, don't think this is highly magnified, so you've got here, this is your um, the glomerulus will be here, your PCT, your DCT, here is loop of Henley, so loop of Henley now dips down into the medulla and eventually it all then passes down the collecting duct and out into the ureter and then out from the ureter to the bladder. OK, that's what we're looking at at the moment. Let's go back where we were, shall we? OK, let's think about a few pointers, shall we? First of all, here we've got what's called the glomerulus, we mentioned before. And here we've got Bowman's capsule. Here we've got the PCT over here. Then we've got loop of Henley. Then we've got the DCT there and the collecting duct here. Now the reason I mention them again is I want to look at these in a little bit more detail in a moment and just see exactly what happens at each stage. First of all, just think about one thing. Selective reabsorption. Now good word this selective means the selecting the size of molecules to reabsorb back into the bloodstream. So useful substances are reabsorbed back from the nephron into the bloodstream. Now what we've got, we've got loads and loads and loads of stuff being filtered out through here and it's passing along the PCT. Now along with waste there's an awful lot of goodness going on here and we want to get it back so that's why you have selective reabsorption. We're reabsorbing good stuff from the nephron back into the bloodstream that eventually we're taken out along the renal vein. Okay. Now let's look at more detail. This bit here, this is Bowman's capsule and in the middle there is the glomerulus. Now, fluid from the blood is pushed into Bowman's capsule by a process called ultrafiltration. Now, I said that this is smaller diameter than this, which means in here you've got very high pressure. High pressure squeezes all the smaller molecules into Bowman's capsules. So you're left behind with um, very high molecular weight molecules, proteins particularly, uh, red blood cells. They're kept behind. They'll travel this way. But everything else, the smaller molecular weight, is squeezed through into Bowman's capsule by this process here, and we call this process ultrafiltration. Now, this is your um, PCT, your proximal convoluted tube on here. Most stuff, 85% of fluid, is reabsorbed into capillaries here. So, fluids altered by reabsorption of all the sugars, most salts, and some of the water. So, an awful lot of um, reabsorption takes place here in the PCT. Down here in a descending loop of Henley, water potential of the fluid is decreased. We're going to come on to this in um, a future video by addition of salts and removal of water. And then we find in the ascending loop of Henley, or ascending limb, sorry, of the loop of Henley, the water potential is increased as salts removed by active transport. So looking here, looking here at energy, okay, looking at energy being used in this point here, active transport to remove salts, okay, and things that are needed. It'll then pass back up into DCT and eventually everything will flow into the collecting duct. So water potential will decrease again by removing water and ensures that the final product, i.e. urine, you want to get rid of, has a low water potential, i.e. doesn't have much water. Therefore, urine has a higher concentration of solutes than blood and tissue fluid. Exactly what we want. We don't want to lose excessive amounts of water. OK, so we've now got all the urine passing down the collecting duct, and that will go into the ureter, and eventually will be stored in the bladder prior to excretion. OK, so that's an overview there now. Let's just move on a little bit, and we can say now, yes, we have described the structure and function of the kidneys. In a future video, we'll look at the function in more detail, particularly what happens in terms of salt concentrations and water potentials, 
but that's enough for now so thank you very much for listening thank you for um, watching the video and bye bye for now